Are you ready to get it done? Stick around. Hey folks, Keith here with Chicken Thigh Fishing. Well, I'm doing some rainy day cleaning and projects on the boat today. And I came across something that I need to take care of because I've been dealing with it for a couple of weeks now. And I'm quite sure that I am not the only one. What I need to do is replace the plug for my trolling motor. So I purchased this. And it is the original uh, part from Minn Kota. And I have an Edge 45 uh, bow mount trolling motor on a 2021 Tracker TXW Pro Team 175. So before we get going, let me explain to you what I was experiencing that indicated something was wrong in case you're experiencing the same thing with your trolling motor. It's a very popular trolling motor. I know a lot of people have them. So what was happening to me was all of a sudden one day when I was out fishing, my trolling motor would stop and go intermittently on its own when I had the foot pedal switch depressed. In other words, I'd be going along, say on the fourth speed, and all of a sudden it would stop, even though I had the switch depressed. And then so naturally I would click it with my foot a few times and then it would come on again, go off again, come on again. And this went on, this has gone on for, you know, a couple of weeks for me. And sometimes I couldn't get it to come back on at all and I'm kind of, beating it with my foot a little and kind of doing the knocking it with a hammer thing you know just banging stuff around and trying to figure out what's going on well make a long story short i realized that my plug was bad and when i take it out i'm going to show you and you'll be able to see clearly how corroded it is and so what was happening was i had an awful lot of corrosion in there and if you see in this new plug in the two prongs with the gold inserts I'm pretty sure that one of them in my bad one is either so corroded that you can't see it or it's missing. So all I know is I tested the power at the uh, receptacle itself and there was power there. So I knew it wasn't between the receptacle and the battery anywhere. I knew it was from the plug to the motor. Sure enough, when I pulled it out, there was an awful lot of corrosion. And, you know, routine maintenance will take care of that. But if you're like me, a plug is just something I don't think about. You plug it in and you forget it. So, you know, I'm sure if I did some routine maintenance, cleaned it regularly, put some dielectric grease on it, I wouldn't have run into this problem. And I promise you I will do that in the future. Because when you run into this problem out on the water, it really stinks. And it really puts a damper on your day when your trolling motor does not work properly. So, we're going to go ahead and replace that plug, and hopefully she's as good as new. So I'm going to take you through it step by step. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is unplug the trolling motor. And you'll see that I have the old plug here. And let's compare that with the new plug. And you can see clearly the difference of the wear and the corrosion. And you can probably see that one where I'm not even sure that that uh, contact insert is still inside there. And this looked a whole lot worse before. I've already cleaned this significantly when I was trying to get it to work. I did clean a lot of corrosion off and really gouged it out a bit. And it worked better, but the problem wasn't resolved. So... I went ahead and got the new plug anyway. I figured I'm better off rather than having some disaster and ruin a whole day of fishing. Now there's another thing I want to show you that I think may have contributed to my problem. And the reason I say that is because when I was mucking with that plug trying to get the connection to work, it seemed to work and keep the connection if I put physically put my hand down there and kind of bent it up a little bit, the connection seemed to work. And then when I let it go and the tension released and the plug went down, I would get that intermittent or that loss of contact and connection. And one thing I noticed I think may have contributed to my problem, and that was the cable the main cable for the trolling motor comes down 
and you can see that the plug itself is attached with zip ties along it and what happened was this was on this side of the plug so this main cable was on the right hand side of the plug as you look at the boat and so right now I have it on the left hand side and when I put the motor up and down it doesn't interfere with that plug but when I had the cable on this side of the plug is when I put the motor down in use this cable obviously moves to go in position with it and what it does is it pulls against and puts pressure on the plug here you can see how it does that and I am quite sure that that contributed to the problem and again you can see the bend in my plug because of it so that's simply a matter of unplugging it and putting it on the other side of this cable and it prevents that because when you put your motor down this cable wants to move this way it doesn't want to move that way so anyway I'm reasonably sure that contributed to my problem so if you check yours put the plug on the right side and you'll probably not experience that and if your plug is bent like mine it's probably on the side that's putting pressure on it so anyway just an FYI as far as that goes alright so let's get into replacing the plug on this trolling motor so the trolling motor foot pedal sits inside the recessed foot pedal tray and it is secured to that with three screws and there's one in the back right here and there are two in the front right here and on the corresponding side so the first thing we'll do is remove those three screws so we can lift the foot pedal out of the foot pedal tray and that's necessary in order to replace this plug okay so we got those three screws removed and I'm just gonna put those in the cup holder there and now you'll see that we are able to remove the foot pedal out of the foot pedal tray and it's a good time to clean your foot pedal tray because man that gets nasty in there so what you're going to see underneath is you have the wiring for the foot pedal and your plug like I said is attached with zip ties to this cable that goes to your motor and so the first thing I'm going to do to free up that plug is to go ahead and crack those zip ties and so you can just see that the plug goes through this route of wiring and it goes in to the connections which you can see from underneath the uh, foot pedal and actually one thing I forgot is I am unable to move the foot pedal back and forth right now and it's necessary to do that to work on it and the reason I can't do that is because my motor is in the up position so I'm gonna go ahead and put my motor down because when I press the pedal it can't turn obviously when it's strapped down so I'm gonna go ahead and release the motor put that down and that way I'll be able to move the foot pedal itself and that'll give me access to where I need to get to okay so now that we have that motor down obviously I'm able to move the foot pedal and the motor can turn so when I move the foot pedal all the way up you can then gain access to all the wiring connections underneath here and so what we're going to do is simply a matter of following the route of the plug wires and you can see that it comes through here and there's a retainer here it's attached here with a zip tie and it is clipped to these other wires here with this wire retainer and then the red and the black wires come out here are the red and the black wires from the new one and so we're just going to follow where those red and black wires go and go ahead and identify the terminals that they're on now one thing I highly recommend when doing something like this and because I do a lot of projects like this is before you get going with taking anything apart take photographs that way you have a photograph to refer to if something doesn't look right when you're going to put it back together it's very easy to forget something or put something where it doesn't go because it, it looks that way so I would take several pictures from several different angles with your phone and that way when you take stuff apart you will have the ability to put them back in the proper location so the first thing I'm gonna do after I take pictures is I'm gonna remove this retainer and that's held in with two screws so we have that clip and the two screws that go with that and I'm gonna keep everything together 
so I know which screws go where when we put them back together. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this zip tie that holds the uh, plug there. And now we're gradually freeing up the plug. And so the next thing I'm going to remove is this wire harness here. It's a little plastic wire harness held in with one screw. So I remove that screw and remove the harness and we'll put that aside. Now next we have this uh, plate down here and this plate attaches to one of the pulleys for the tension cables and it's got three screws in it, uh, two screws in it rather and the pin from the pulley goes through this hole. So we're going to remove those two screws And you can see that that plate came off like so and it obviously can only go in one way because it has the hole for the spindle on the uh, cable pulley here. So I'm going to take that plate with these two screws and put that aside as well. And so now you should be able to see that the red wire that comes out of the plug wire loom that holds the two wires together, the red wire goes up and is routed this way through here and up and it connects to this terminal right here so I'm gonna make sure that I recognize that when we put this on now clearly I'm gonna need a little extra length here so I'm gonna have to cut back this wire loom and that's no problem I'll just cut this wire loom back here that way I have enough wire to stretch where it needs to go. So our new red wire is going to go through there and come up and the connection for the new one is right there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is free up this collar right here and now it may not be totally necessary to do that but I think it's going to allow more freedom of movement of the wires because this collar holds all the wires that come through this wire loom here in place and I just want to give it as much movement as I can so I'm not putting undue pressure on anything. So I'll go ahead and remove these screws. So I have those screws removed and they each have a washer. And so now I can move this collar back and that just gives this a little bit more freedom of movement in order to work with. So now the next thing we're going to remove is this plate here. And the reason we're going to remove this plate is because underneath it is where the black wire makes its connection. Now there's going to be tension on this plate from this cable. And so it may be difficult to remove the plate itself because the cable is pushing on it. All you have to do is go ahead and release it with the tension release screw here. And you turn that counterclockwise to loosen the tension and that will give you enough play in that cable to be able to remove that plate. So we'll go ahead and remove the two screws that secure that. And now that we have those screws removed and we loosen the tension on the cable using the tension screw, we should be able to slide this plate off these two notches and just kind of manipulate it out of there. So when we have our new plug, the red wire is going to go through here and it's going to connect up in here with the corresponding red connection. I removed the screw to this uh, terminal here so I can move it so you can see better. So there's where our red connection is going to go. So the black wire comes out and goes around and goes to this middle terminal right here on the momentary and constant and off switch for your foot pedal. So all I'm going to do is kind of pop that off because we're going to take that plug out. 
and now I have the negative terminal from the old plug released. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to follow that red wire to the positive terminal. I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. And now I have the positive red terminal of the old plug released. And now I can simply pull it through. And here is your old plug. So I will keep this on hand just in case I should need it for something and see if I can uh, clean it up sufficiently and fix this. And then I'll have a backup plug should anything happen to the new one. But uh, I'm not thinking so. This may find the trash. So now we're going to take our new plug and when we're done we're going to secure it with zip ties to the main cable uh, wire loom here like it was before just so it's not you know roaming around freely but for the time being we're going to leave it we're going to take our two ends our uh, positive and negative and so now we're going to put our plug in and go ahead and wire it now remember the new plug wire is going to go in this notch here underneath and there's a notch in the front here that it fits right through and then we're going to take this retainer when we're all done hooking it up and put that back so that's going to go like that so now remember the red is going to go up through here and it's going to come out and we're going to go ahead and again I have this removed here just for so you can see it better and we're going to get enough slack so we can fit our hands in there and I'm not sure if you can see that but we're going to pop that right on and there is our new positive red connection right there so we've got it on the terminal and now remember our black wire is going to go around the pulley and it's going to go underneath the cable to the back here and we're going to go ahead and put it on the middle terminal of the switch and because I have fat fingers I am going to go ahead and use a pair of needle nose pliers to do that so before I put everything back together I'm going to test it out we're going to take our new plug and go ahead and plug it in and first I'm gonna test constant and my motor is running and I'm gonna test momentary and I got it on momentary so I'll test the switch the foot switch and I don't know if you can hear it but my motor is running perfectly so it would appear that we have successfully replaced the plug now we just have to put it all back together and we'll be good to go now before I go back to work on this and put everything back together where it goes I'm gonna unplug it okay so now that we know everything's working we'll go ahead and replace all the other components and that's simply a matter of reverse order and so we will start off with this plate here and that's only going to go in one way and those two slots on the plate are going to go on the two notches here and so we will manipulate that so that the wires are under it and you can it's got a little bit of flex to it so you can bend it a little bit to get it into position and keeping the wires underneath the corner here and we're just going to get that into place so that the two no uh, these two ridges are in the two notches and now we can replace the two screws now that we have that plate in place I'm going to go back to the tension screw that's in the front here and I'm going to tighten up the tension on that cable and the pulleys and you'll see that that is much tighter now and so next we're going to route the wires around this pulley housing here and replace 
this plate which you remember the center pin of the pulley is going to go in the center hole of the plate and we'll put that into position and replace the two screws there okay so now we have that plate in and that plate in holding everything together now we're going to replace that wire harness that holds these wires up here and here's our new wire going through and then the new wire goes up through the front notch here and so I'm going to put all of those wires into the plastic wire harness there and line it up with the hole that that goes in and we will replace the screw for that wire harness okay so we have the plate the cable tightened the second plate the wire harness and now we're going to take and I'm going to get as much slack as I can on the new cable just so I have I know I have plenty of room for the plug to reach the receptacle and then I am going to go ahead and replace this retaining bracket here and I'll use those two screws to install that And now that we have that bracket holding the wire in the notch, we're going to go ahead and replace the zip tie that was going through here with a new zip tie. And clip off the excess. And so now we have the zip tie and this in place. We have our plug coming through and the red wire going to the red terminal, black wire going to the black terminal underneath this plate here, and the cable coming out for the plug to go into the receptacle, which we've already tested and we know works. And so the last thing I think we need to do is replace the collar here that we loosened up. And I don't know that we needed to loosen up that collar, but it just seems like it gave a little bit more uh, little bit more play so we'll go ahead and replace the screws and the washers here okay so just to recap we replaced the plate, the second plate, the wire harness, the retainer, and the zip tie here. We replaced the collar here. Now we have the plug coming out. And I'm going to go ahead and reach it through. So the yeah, only thing we really would have left is to go ahead and, you know, zip tie the plug cable to the motor cable. And then last but not least would be installing it back into the recessed foot pedal tray which as you recall is three screws two in the front one on either side and then one in the back and so i'm going to take the time to clean that up nice while i have that foot pedal out then i'm going to go ahead and replace that and then we just replaced a plug on a trolling motor so really not a hard job at all. Sometimes when people mention plugs and wiring, people kind of get freaked out about it. I just did that job with a screwdriver and a pair of snips. I don't think I used any other tools to do that. So if I can do it, you can do it. Save yourself some money. Don't bring it to a shop. Check your plug. If you need a new plug, you just saw how easy it is to replace. So I hope this video was a help to you if you experienced the same problem I did and you think you need a new plug. And if you're smarter than me, you do a little bit of maintenance on it and you may not run into that problem in the first place anyway. But if you're like me and you forget about things that you plug in, 
you're probably eventually going to have to replace your trolling motor plug. So again, I hope this was a help to you. Hey, thanks for being a part of Chicken Thigh Fishing. We really appreciate you, and we will see you out on the water. Until then, stay fishing, my friends.